with every part of God's Word, with every story and account from the Bible, we see both law and gospel. Law is what God tells us to do, but we don't always do. It lets us know that we deserve punishment, and we would get punished, except that we have the gospel. Gospel is a fancy word for the good news, and that is what God has done, that Jesus Christ has paid for our sins. It's the good news and promise God has given us that we've forgiven children of God, and as such, we get amazing inheritance from our God. So we want to, with each story, see the law and gospel. It takes a little work always to see it, but let's look at what we see in creation. What law do we hear in creation? Well, we do hear that we would be nothing without God. We are nothing. God had to make us. He had to make the whole world. And as such, we also know God has the power and control to end us. We are subject to him. That's, a, that's law. That's threat. That's reality. And as sinners, we know what we deserve. We also might think of a couple commandments where God tells us not to steal. Why can he tell us to do that? Because he made everything. It really isn't ours. And he tells us that we can let other people have their stuff. We also hear about coveting in the ninth and 10th commandment. Coveting is wanting somebody else's stuff or situation. When God hasn't given it to us, we trust when God made the world he also knew what he was doing. And he, when he made us individually, he gave us our talents, our situation, our circumstance, so we can be content with that. And God tells us don't covet or want everybody else's stuff and situation. God made everything exactly the way he wanted it to be. We broke it, but God still creates things and sustains them as he wants. We need to be content with that. And God tells us to be content with the way God made the world, and you. We might say, if I was God, I'd do it differently. All those things that we hear reminds us that we're sinners who deserve God's punishment. And thankfully, we don't stop with the law. We also get the gospel in this account. We, we first see that God loved us enough to make us. He didn't have to make us, but he wanted to make us. He, he, he wanted a family. He wanted us in his family. And the, the amazing world, with all its diversity and uniqueness and complexity, so much that we can't understand how our own eyes and brain all completely work, let alone all of creation, uh, he gave that to us as a gift, showing us how much he loves us. And then despite our sin, he sent Jesus into this world, not just to love us, not just to remake us, but to remake our bodies and souls and all creation. God promises that in eternity, there'll be a new heavens and a new earth. Everything's going to be perfect the way he designed It'll work perfectly in this broken world with the bad weather and, and things not going right isn't going to exist. But he's given that to us as a future, not because we deserve it, but because of what Jesus Christ has done. And so when we think about this account of creation, we think about uh, what Jesus has done in our place and what he's suffered in our place. First, we realize all of our sins that we mentioned that we heard in the law, they were taken care of by Jesus on the cross. He died and paid for all of them. All the guilt is gone. But also in its place, Jesus lived a perfect life, always being content. Even though he looked, lived on this world just like you and me, and he was just a, a poor, normal person with no great place to lay his head, he was happy with how his Heavenly Father had put him on this planet and happy with his mission. He did that in our place. So now, by faith, God sees us not as the sinners we are, but as perfect children of God like Jesus. And that's how we're considered. Not because we are, but all by grace. And that's the law and the gospel of creation.